Alright, boys, this is the best dragon deck you've ever seen. I know it's not using the Ur Dragon, but you can shut up, because <laughs> Ur Dragon's stupid. Now, Tiamat is the is the commander for this for this deck tech today. And if you like Tiamat, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, while you're down there, please comment down below your favorite commander, how your day's going, or if you like the deck. But I really appreciate all the support. We're nearing 200 subscribers, so it would mean a lot to me if we can make that fairly soon. But Tiamat allows you to, whenever it enters the battlefield, uh, if you cast it, search your library for up to five dragon cards not named Tiamat that, have, that each have different names, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. So, what dragons are we going to be getting out? Well, that's the question, ain't it, Tim? We got Ancient Dragon, we got a Tark, uh, World Render, we got, we got Blade Wing the Risen, we have Dragon Lord Call again to give this stuff haste. We got uh, Dracoset, Maw Flames. We got Gold Span Dragon. We got Inferno of the Star Mounds. We have Karthus, Tyrant of Jund, which uh, untaps all dragons and gain control of them to gain haste. Uh, we have Karth, Unrivaled Ancient. We have Lothless, Dragon uh, Queen. We have Mirim, Sentinel Worm. We have. D d d d d uh, Savage Vent Maw, which I used to run way back when in a uh, 60 card. It, this means a lot to me. I love this card. It's awesome. Uh, we have Scion of Draco. We have Scion of the Ur Dragon. We have Slumger of the Drifting Death. We have Terror of the Peaks. We have Two Headed Hellkite, which is like one of my favorite cards nowadays. This card's really good, really efficient. I don't know why. For six mana, it's a 5 5 Flying Menace Haste. Attacks, draw two cards. I like it. I think it's a good card. And Utvara Hellkite, which is nasty. It's disgusting. But yeah, we're going to be getting any of those dragons, any combination of those dragons. But how are we going to get there? Well, we got cards like Dra Dragon Lord Servant and Dragon Speaker Shaman, which make it, makes your dragons cost less. We also have really, Nogi, Draco Zealot. Uh, dragon spells you cast goes well unless to cast. Whenever it attacks, if you control three or more dragons until end of turn, it becomes a dragon with. That's 5-5 five, five with flying, which is actually pretty funny. It's it's a 3-3 three, three that's so, like, it wants to be a dragon so bad that eventually it just becomes one if you have enough dragons. But we also have Urza's Incubator, which makes the dragons cost less, two less to be precise. We have Sol Ring, obviously. Uh, we have Arcane Signet, because obviously. But we also have Quicksilver Amulet and Monster Manual, because it doesn't matter being able to have it throw out four, but... Being able to pay mana and put a creature card from your hand on the battlefield is really good considering a lot of these dragons cost a lot of mana. Being able to just real quick throw them out and they don't enter the battlefield and they don't use the stack. The ability uses the stack but not the actual creature entering unless it has an ETB effect in which case then it adds on the stack or whatever. Uh, but that means that you get around a lot of stuff like counter spells and stuff because it's, it's a lot of mana to have it just suddenly counter which suck but swift but boots uh, and lightning greaves gives can give them haste when in doubt because you kind of need it thought vessel to give you no maximum hand size just in case because getting five cards from tiana is really really good but basic removal package path to exile swords to plowshare we have void render we have assassin's trophy anguish done making um uh, i'm finally using and they shall no fear um uh, they shall know no fear. Uh, choose a creature type. Creatures control of the chosen type get plus one plus zero and get indestructible until end of turn. Your dragons are indestructible now, which is pretty good. We are running uh, heroic intervention as well because it would be dumb not to. But I'm finally running, and they shall know fear. They shall know no fear. Uh, also, Tiberius protection because it'd be dumb not to. And Boros charm, so you could just keep those dragons out so that people can stop touching dragons. Just back off. You can just throw them out with Quicksilver Amulet and Monster Manual, and then be able to uh, keep them there due to Tefira's protection, uh, broken invention, whatever. Uh, Team or Ascendancy, giving your stuff haste, and whenever a big boy enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. is really good, really efficient. It's mana efficient. I think it's really good. Uh, sneak Attack, also being able to just throw your stuff out. It does sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step, but that's why we have stuff like Eerie Ultimatum and Reanimate, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, Shadow of the Warp gives uh, first creature spell you cast uh, two less to cast, 
and whenever opponent casts non-creature spells, uh, the first non-creature spell each turn deals two damage to that player. Shadows of Warp is great, also because I play a Warhammer, so uh, I've never had uh, uh, I've never had perils, perils of the warp. So, <laughs> screw you, Nick and Quentin. For t I've never had it happen to me, even though I run a lot of psychers. But uh, Kindred Discovery, being able to draw cards or attack whenever dragons enter or attack, really, really good. Uh, Garrick's Uprising also gives your stuff Trample and Card Draw. Court of the Bounty allows you to throw creatures out uh, from your hand as long as you uh, are the Monarch. Animate Dead, uh, Reanimate, Eerie Ultimatum, all give uh, all is like an insurance policy in case your dragons do die and hit the graveyard. Then why not just throw one back out from there? Really good. Really like it. Acolyte of Bayomet, though. Uh, as long as you have Tiamat out, which, so just turn two, throw this out, and eventually when you do get her out, it's the first dragon spell you cast each turn costs two less to cast, which is great, because mana efficiency. Woo! Also, Crux of Fate, the, one of the best cards in the deck, because you're going to choose all non-dragons. All non-dragons just die. They, they don't, they don't get destroyed, they just die. I know it says destroy, but they die. Um, but yeah deck really good you got basic ramp you got uh, birds of paradise like noble hierarch noble hierarch uh, scale nurturer i mean it's it's a lot of ramp into big dragons it's like green but more than just green it's multicolored. it's beautiful dragons are beautiful they're awesome and they're big dumb idiots i think this deck would be really good really fun definitely like a power level like six i would say it's definitely combat based but it's really big dumb go running sark on the master list not the other ones mostly because whenever creature attacks you or planeswalker you control each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature so as long as you have dragons dead basically nobody can attack you as long as you have this out and you can create dragons as soon as this comes out and so end of turn each planeswalker each control becomes a four four dragon creature and gets flying i mean you could just slam this out uh, make it into a 4-4, attack with it, whatever. It's really good, really efficient. It does what it needs to do. But sitting at a really high 3.76, but it does get offset with all the other stuff that's in the deck. I just think this deck's really fun. It's really cool. It's dragons. Nobody nobody say no to dragons. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the deck, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, while you're down there, uh, comment down below your favorite commander. Uh, what you like about the deck this deck what you change about it don't really care just make sure to like and subscribe it means a lot to me and see you guys in the next deck tech